Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how to rhinestone a phone charging cable and wall cube. This is a perfect project if you're brand new to rhinestoning or if you're just looking to make something really fast and simple. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step. For this project, you can use any wall adapter and charging cable you want. My favorite glue for rhinestone projects is called GemTac by the brand Beacon, and I transfer it into a precision tip bottle. I like to use a wax pencil that can be sharpened to pick up and place my rhinestones. I'll be using Crystal AB rhinestones in the size SS8. There are links to all of the products I'm using in the description. I started by gently sanding the cube and the ends of the cable with sandpaper to give the surface some texture, which will help the glue and the rhinestones to adhere to it better. Then I wiped them with some rubbing alcohol on a lint-free wipe to remove the dust and any dirt or oil that could be on the surface. For this entire project, I used just one size of rhinestone and I did a honeycomb pattern, which means that the stones in each row nestle into the cracks between the stones of the previous row, just like a honeycomb or a bricklay. I started with the cube and I applied a thin line of gem tack along the edge. I placed the rhinestones side by side in a straight line as tightly together as possible. And in the next row, each stone nestles perfectly into the little spaces between the stones in the first row. I did the first two rows kind of at the same time, just to figure out the spacing as I wrapped around the four corners. But after that, I did each row one by one. When you get to the end of the first row, you might not have enough space for one more stone, but the space is still a little too big and leaves a visible gap. In which case, you just need to go back and do a little bit of nudging to leave a teeny tiny space between some of the previous stones so you can close in that gap. You want there to be an equal amount of space between each stone and no visible gaps anywhere. Once you have that foundation laid out, the rest is easy. You just keep following the honeycomb pattern, lining up your stones side by side, and fitting them into the cracks between the stones in the previous row. As long as your first row is nice and straight, the rest should be simple. My charging cube has these little circular dips on each side, and I found that they didn't really make a difference to my honeycomb pattern. I was able to just keep following my spacing the same as before. The stones do dip in a little bit, so the final result still has those two dents. But it doesn't cause any gaps or make anything look bad, it just looks like a fully rhinestone charging cube. You might have a bit more trouble with this if you're using larger rhinestones than I am. When I got to the bottom of the cube, I did the final two rows at the same time, because this is where the spacing can get a bit wonky again. You might not have exactly enough space for one more row, so you might just need to nudge the stones down a bit to create a little more space between the final two rows and make everything look uniform. The most important thing with spacing is just to make sure you don't have any stones overlapping the very edges that will affect the way the cube sits or plugs into the wall. You want those edges of the cube to stay perfectly straight. For the ends of the charging cables, I did the exact same honeycomb pattern with those SS8 stones starting at one edge and laying the stones side by side all the way around. Again, be careful at the end of the first row to make sure that the spacing is all even and there are no gaps. I continued the next row, nestling each stone into the cracks of the previous row for a nice neat look. And I did this all the way to the bottom. And again, at the bottom, you wanna be careful with your spacing so that you don't have any awkward gaps. Then I moved on to the other end to finish off the project. These cable ends are really small and narrow. I only had to do six and seven rows to fully cover them, so this part is super quick. The whole project is super quick, so this would be perfect if you want to hand make a small gift for several different people, like your bridal party or maybe your kids' teachers. Everybody needs a phone charger. You can get them at the dollar store or in big packs on Amazon, so they're not too expensive. And you can customize different colors or patterns for all of your loved ones. This one is just silver, of course, so it's super basic, but if you'd like to see some other colors and patterns on phone chargers, let me know in the comments and I can definitely make some more tutorials like this one. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.